I've been uh, diagnosed with corticobasal syndrome and it's affected my speech somewhat. She treats it as an inconvenience. Joyce is, as many people know, a fierce, independent spirit, and that illness has not affected that, that aspect of Joyce at all. I always thought that I was a visual artist. I had been showing and selling my work. I always wanted to go to graduate school, and when they announced the MFA program at UC. SD, I ran up the hill as fast as I could. They accepted me. The professors were tough on me, and I learned conceptual uh, basis of art. I put away my representation and drawing with when I went to UCSD, I was leaning uh, toward the conceptual, but that uh, f confirmed it for me. Manny Farber was spent a lot of time with me. Joyce did some kind of presentation in Manny's class, and Manny's response was, well, just not risky enough, you know, this work. And the next day she came to class wearing a necklace made of razor blades. <laughs> uh, how's that for risk? Uh, and she was dead serious um, uh, n about being uh, uh, fierce in her presentation of herself, of being of wanting to be taken seriously. After I got the degree, I had a community, and the faculty were splendid. I had four distinct experiences with the death, and they were very powerful and all so different. I wanted to understand the death from a clinical setting, and I went to the medical school. Uh, I talked to the dean, Dr. Jerry Burrow, and he was, he put me in touch with the body donation program. I drew for a year in the lab from the dead. I wanted to be part of the anatomy class, and he said I had to be official. I suggested artist in residence, he thought it had cachet <laughs> because he didn't know of any other medical school that had a fine art project attached to it. She was introduced to me as the artist in residence, and I hadn't heard of such a, an appointment before, and so on. Uh, in the ensuing 25 years, I've come to realize what that means. Her primary exposure was in the anatomy laboratory. She would come to our dissection lab and sit in the corner with her rice paper and her India ink pens and make drawings while the students were studying. Everything came from there. I invented projects for me 
and for the medical school. She's remarkable for her approach to her art and um, is very involved in talking about and demonstrating the areas of overlap between art and human biology, human anatomy. The inspiration was Rembrandt and a whole series of anatomy lessons that are historically important. I called that specifically the anatomy lesson because I researched European and American collections of anatomy lesson paintings. People have a hard time uh, uh, thinking about death. It's something we all face, but it's still a hard thing to, to confront. And I think the anatomy lesson by Rembrandt uh, showed the real value of, of uh, human anatomy in the training of, of physicians, and that it is, is in fact, a high-minded endeavor. Joyce's work does the same thing. She celebrates anatomy, and I think that's of great value. She teaches a course, an elective to the medical students, entitled uh, Drawing as a Way of Seeing. Turns out I'm the titular director of the course because I have a faculty appointment and her appointment doesn't include being able to solely run a course. So I'm, I'm sort of the head of the course, but she teaches it. And, and my main involvement in the course was I actually took it. <laughs> Joyce's interest in the human body and human anatomy is, of course, that of an artist, but also that of sort of a humanist. I mean, she looks at the body from a comparative standpoint and as a visual exercise. So she sees connections between human anatomy and the anatomy of, of other vertebrates. The library has a permanent installation of Joyce's work, The Alphabet of Bones. I have heard students refer to this as the dark corner of the hallway as you come towards special collections. Up in the soffit is, are actually the cutouts silvered on wood of the alphabet of bones. And then in the, the dark corner are Joyce's prints of the alphabet of bones. Superimposed on that are 15 of her original drawings. I tend to like the alphabet of bones It's an original calligraphy and one of my best ideas. My themes are survival, evolution, and transformation. All my work is about these three themes. The anatomy lesson was a natural to encompass the life cycle, death, and the human body, and hope, and the cosmos itself. My books have generated from the first public art that I did after graduation from the MFA at UCSD. I wanted to do the name wall at the LA airport. They asked me to send a letter. My husband who was in the proposal industry said I shouldn't have sent a letter, I should do a proposal book. That was my first artist book. I've been doing them ever since. 
Well, an artist book is actually a book that the artist has created. It is not about the artist itself, and it's, it is not about an art form. It is an art form in itself. In the mid-90s, I received a rather large donation by a very close friend, uh, Bob Orton, and uh, he had been collecting conceptual books for, for a very long time. And with that, I had permission to I gave myself permission to uh, collect more contemporary artist books and the conceptual artist books. Joyce actually has not done several, she has done a lot. <laughs> she, she, we have about uh, 60 books by now. We started collecting her books in the mid-90s mid and we have not finished. Her books have to do with what she is going through at the moment, she has changed. In, not in style, but in, uh, in, with her themes quite a bit. I think she has a very large range, and she likes to draw at all times. Drawing is everything. Drawing is a primary language. Most people don't think of, of drawing as a form of thought, but for Joyce it certainly was. It was a way of finding out what she knows, of it, understanding how she saw the world uh, and it was astonishing she was always drawing she would uh, take her her drawing pad to to lectures to class uh, she was always at work in that way the work that Joyce creates for the public sector has a, a universal appeal in the sense that Everyone experiences it in a different way. My interest in public art seemed to have, as all my works do, generated from intense personal experience. I will give the in conceptual intent of the sculpture and the space itself and its function. My first work was geared to the LA airport uh, name wall and it came from experiencing the space itself which was bleak and there was no place to sit down in this long corridor. And that's the first look at America for many. How could I improve the space? I did all 60,000 tiles with first names. First names are personal and the space became personalized. Her process is very studied. It is very uh, detailed. She takes everything into consideration, even consideration itself. <laughs> and, and she studies the physical space. She thinks about the forms. She thinks about their relevance to her as an artist and their relevance to the space in which they are going. The first was the Balboa Park Activity Center, which is the gymnasium on Park Boulevard. That project involved work that she did on the interior that was related to the activities that would occur to sport and the history of sport. The next project was the Mission Valley Library. My involvement in that was predominantly through the artist selection and the beginning of her uh, evolution of her design. I then moved on to establish my consulting business. In that capacity, I also was able to work closely with her on a major interior project for the San Diego County Operations Center in Kearney Mesa. The artwork 
at the County Operations Center is a piece that is made out of a lot of, of loops. It is very large scale. You walk in and you just want to jump up <laughs> and, and reach for it. And when you get upstairs, you're literally looking through it, but the, the loops vary. So it really is about what we would refer to as negative space or the air around it and not just the object. The science uh, section in the New York Times a few years ago, it, it was the Cassini uh, going to Saturn and to trace the orbits of the moons of Saturn. And it looked like a drawing in space. I kept the, uh, the uh, images of that. And when I got the commission for the county of San Diego, I used that drawing in space for the orbital loops. I always felt that public service and public engagement were, was important. Dialogues in art and architecture a 22-year series at the Athenaeum Music Library were extensions of my own experience and interest. The first um, one or two um, dialogues on art and architecture, I'm not quite sure that it was called that from the beginning, were still under the landmark auspices. And then she started, uh, wanted to do this on her own, and she did, she asked, or I asked her to continue. And from then on, from 1990, 91 on, she did uh, three or four um, uh, lectures in the uh, Dialogue and Art and Art Architecture series. And she was the one who um, decided on who would come. She quite often had, um, help from Ellen Capo especially, and later from uh, uh, Teddy Cruz. But uh, it was really her idea behind it, and she brought the most amazing people. I was in touch with uh, San Francisco and LA for architectural uh, series that they had. I had famous artists and architects for many years. We actually did a little book after 20 years when we had the anniversary. Uh, we did an, a little book about all the, uh, and, and it went on after that. It stopped at uh, the 20 years for, where the anniversary was in 2012. So we still continued until about 2015 with the series. Joyce has given, as far as I can remember, one lecture thus far here at the library, and that was on the occasion of the Grand Quartet exhibition that we did with the other libraries here. She did a formal talk about her work here when that exhibition was on. One of my favorite um, elements of her exhibition here was a recreation of a great sort of performance piece that was an ice sculpture that we did right in front of Geisel Library. In the morning, these huge blocks of ice were delivered and the professional ice carvers um, came to create this sort of line of letters that spelled out, we the people. Now, the point of this was to, that over the course of a day, the sculpture was going to melt away very slowly and take an entire day. And at the end of the day, Joyce was going to make comments. The exhibition was in October, so one thought the weather might have 
collaborated with us better than it did because it turned out to be one of those incredibly warm late summer days and by noon there were only a few pieces of We the People left melting quickly in front of the library. <laughs> it sort of threw off the entire event. But Joyce, of course, being Joyce, was able to sort of take that in stride and deliver her comments and to perhaps a somewhat smaller audience since some people were planning to come later in the day. But like everything Joyce does, it turned out beautifully. The clarity of Joyce's work comes from matching the, the, the medium uh, to not only the, the message, but to the, the, the essence of the work. All my works uh, relate to the three themes that I've uh, outlined, and the medium emerges. One of the things that is also really important to say is how many different mediums she became master of. Small little sculptural books, books that open and close in very strange ways like, like theaters, her large-scale sculptures in public spaces, her public performances, her exhibitions, her poetry. From primeval deep cover, when our imagination happened, when we first stood upright on two feet, when we freed our hands from manual labor, when we strode through tall grasses across African plains, curved backs on bent knees, our dangling arms, ground grazing, being ground savvy, until we arc ourselves up to overlook tall grasses, gravity centered in our spine, with its axis in a nearly straight line. Bone is alive, our skeleton is alive, our armature, our primary structure, alive with the growth of bone, alive with the living tissue of bone, the lacunae and lamellae of bone, the fiber of bone, the network of canaliculi of bone. She wanted to embody the imperative of communication and the delight of thought, and she used things we would rather not look at, the human body in shreds or people dying from dementia, but she would look at it with a clear-eyed intensity, with full understanding of what was going on, and take these subjects and, and turn them into I think objects of, of, of beauty, I think that in her case, beauty is a kind of debris of, of study and thought and the desire to communicate, but shimmering, beautiful, arresting beauty or debris, nevertheless. Joyce is a lot of fun. I'm very drawn to her quirkiness and her eccentricities, the character of her art and the fun of her art and the depth of her art are very much defining qualities of Joyce herself. Joyce grapples with some um, very, very deep issues. And um, she is, uh, through her art, uh, giving expression to environmental interests. Her theme has to do with uh, the human condition. She always has such wonderful ideas. She is so interested in absolutely everything. She has a great sense of humor. She's highly organized. I admire all of that about Joyce. She just is a Renaissance woman. And Do you seal the drawings? Yes, mm -hmm. it's uh, like... Joyce's illness has sharpened her poetry. As we know already, it's uh, her ability to speak that's been compromised. But her brain uh, certainly has not been affected. She's as, as, as sharp, engaging, as ferocious, uh, as, uh, as much a friend as ever. Very much engaged, not only with people, but with her work. 
Her work isn't finished. She's, uh, she still has many projects that she's overseeing. It's her whole body of work that's significant to me. If the work doesn't give its own rewards and the stage you're in doesn't suggest the next stage, they're in the wrong profession.